Hello, everyone. I think we're live. You, oh, hold on. Let me close that. YouTube tonight, fingers crossed. There is some weird stuff going on with YouTube I have never seen before. Like my actual videos, actually, if uh, like Nick or any of you guys with YouTube channels, um, Joseph, if, check your, your YouTube studio and tell me if all your recent videos are showing for you. At first, I thought I was hacked because tonight's live stream was missing. It was, The last live stream it was showing was from February. Um, all my recent videos from the last three weeks, gone. Like, But then when I go and look up the link, like the direct link for my website, they're there. They're just not showing up in my YouTube studio. Super, super bizarre. Um, I'm just curious if you, are, you guys are having that happen too. I mean, I have two-factor authentication, chances of me being hacked, not super likely. You never know. But yeah, it, but if you were hacked, things would just be gone completely. It, like they would be deleted, not hidden. It's a very odd, I have never, like it's not like the videos are set to private because in your YouTube studio, you can see all of your content, whether or not like you share it with everyone else. Very bizarre. Um, so yeah, really, really weird. Anyway, tonight we are going to be painting a fluffy cat in charcoal and this is available to bid over on my website. You may want to wait and see how this goes be just because, not that it won't be good, but it's going to have a much more sketchy look than the original photo because it is in charcoal and I love that sketchy look with charcoal. But we're going to be focusing on getting details. I'm going to show you how to use water with charcoal for the details around the eyes and then we're going to be working on getting the look of that fluffy fur. So that is going to be fun. And uh, let's see, what else do I need to go over? I'm, I'm kind of more scatterbrained than usual. There's a gnat in here. Just because of I was trying to sort through, like I couldn't find tonight's live stream. It was gone. I had to use the weirdest backwards way to find it. To it, it's, it's, yes, it's been fun. So anyway, um, oh, anything else? Okay, so tonight I am going to be showing you what $1,600 from Vistaprint can get you, besides a very, very sad and empty bank account, because that part's true too. So we've got that. I also got myself a new phone case with my own art printed on it recently. Look how good that looks. I am so in love. So I'm gonna share where I got these and give you my first impression of both the price. We'll go over everything. Um, so I'll be sharing that. It's not an affiliate or anything like that. Oh, I should look into that. I wonder if there is an affiliate. I have to find out. But anyway, um, I want to test them longer before I start giving affiliate links out. But anyway, um, that I will be sharing after the project tonight. And let's see, I've got my reference photo going. It looks like we are good. So the first thing that I did, I drew this guy out and you can just trace it from your computer. Like you can keep it super simple. If you don't want to freehand the subject yourself, you can do this for anything. I just traced, you can kind of see it on there, from I taped the paper to the computer screen, saved some time, traced that, and I'm gonna use transfer paper. I have already used transfer paper to transfer the image. All you do is take some transfer paper, you stick that under, you get a stylus or an old pen and you trace over what you've already drawn. Now I recommend doing this even if you want to freehand. You can still freehand, but freehand on another piece of paper so that you can do all your erasing and your smudging, get that done there and then trace it and use transfer paper. Now I've got a perfectly clean transfer onto my, my actual project paper. There's no eraser marks all over. I didn't burn through from erasing too hard because I kept changing stuff, no, nothing like that. All of those changes would be done on that separate scratch piece of paper that you did your initial drawing on. So it's a much easier way, much safer way to get your work cleanly transferred over. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this off now. You don't need that anymore. And I recommend whenever you do this method, save the tracing paper portion because if you later on are drawing and you realize either you missed something or let's say you've been drawing and your eyes just don't look right, you can hold this back over it and see, did you accidentally make your eye come out a little too far to the left, a little too far to the right? You can use this to basically check your work, like a little cheat sheet where, not that, no, tracing is not cheating, but a little, little way to double check to see if your drawing is what it initially started as because we all know once you start start shading and getting all fancy with your tools, sometimes things get scooched where you didn't want them. So, okay. The pencils that I'm gonna be using tonight are General's Charcoal, and I've got my Extra Soft. I'll definitely be using you. Um, I probably don't need Soft. I'll probably just do the Hard and the Extra Soft. And I need my White Charcoal. So these are gonna be my main go-tos here. And let's go ahead and sharpen these. Now, I've got three sharpeners out right now because there's a very good chance that some of these are gonna be dull and I'm gonna find out once I start sharpening. 
So the other method I can do is take a razor. Oh, I don't have an X-Acto knife in here. I may have to go get one. If they keep breaking, that's another method. Oh, that one's already sharp. You are good. You are not good. Yeah, the sharpener's doing good here. So we'll sharpen you, sharpen you. Now, the only thing that I don't love about the tracing and transfer paper method with using the charcoal pencils is sometimes the charcoal doesn't really, like it doesn't erase, the transfer paper is almost not oily, but kind of like it did the charcoal doesn't stick super well to it all the time. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but there you go. All of the supplies that I'm using tonight are listed in the video description. And is that it? Are we ready to go? I think we're ready to go. I need shading tools though. So I've got you. I'm definitely going to need one of these guys. Let's change the cover on it. I wasn't quite ready apparently. Oops, these just went all over the floor. And after the live stream, I'll also tell you about one of my new, I can't say studio assistant because he can never be in the studio because of any paint fumes and such. They're very sensitive, but he's my new office buddy and some plans I have for a habitat that I'm kind of excited about, kind of a unique way to go. So we'll be sharing all of that later tonight. Okay, let's get started. So this guy, I'm gonna start with his eye. And I'm just going to zoom my reference photo in. I'm going to start with the hard lead because I don't want this to smudge too much. Now the hard, it's not that it's not dark, it's that it's, I can probably zoom this in some, it's not gonna smudge as much as a soft. The softer lead is gonna smudge out better. Let me zoom this in. I don't know why I have that out so far. Um, easel. Come on, there you go. Let me check on this one. We can zoom you in as well. There we go. Okay, so back to that hard lead initially. Just mapping out about where everything is going to go. Yeah, see over the, the uh, transfer paper, it doesn't stick super well. And this is a five by seven, so I'm not gonna get all the detail in here, but I can still get a decent amount. He's got some interesting detail in the eye. I don't need it exact, I'm just gonna go for close. Let's get that white in there so I don't accidentally go over that before I mean to. It's much easier to make things darker than to lighten them up, so we'll start with that. And then he's got a little eyelid, so we're gonna lift this up a bit higher. And these are the things that you wanna watch in your reference photo. This reference photo can be found over at my website. I got this one from Unsplash. And if you look at that photo, we've got dark and then it gets light and then dark again. And that's what we really wanna capture there. So we're gonna pull this up. And then anywhere where I want it to really smudge a bit better, I'm gonna switch over to my soft charcoal. Now I've got a lot of these different ones, the hardness level. So this one is extra soft. I've got soft, I've got medium, and I've got hard. I don't know if there's an extra hard or not, but those, I, you can simplify it and just go with the softest and the hardest. And that that's really enough to get started. Once you get comfortable, you can go ahead and start using those mid-range. But if in the beginning you're thinking, I don't know which one to choose, just go with these two. You can do, really with just the softer ones, you can do everything you need. So I'm using the soft, gonna darken this up a bit more. And the eye is really where the majority of the detail is going to be. I'm not gonna spend this much time on everything else. Let's see, we've got a little bit darker as it fans out here around the pupil. So I'm making these little straight lines. And then let's take the white and get some little detail. Don't go crazy with the white. I'm gonna let that gray paper, and this is Canson Me Tens paper, I'm gonna let most of that show through. That's really all that eye needs. You don't need to go super crazy on that. So maybe smudge a little bit more. And let's see, this guy. Let's 
This eye is much darker. It is also slightly out of focus. So I'm not gonna try to pull in nearly as much detail as the other one. Not nearly as much with the white either, just very soft. Okay, and while I'm over here, let's just go ahead and get this cheek. We've got this definite white area. And this is more solid because this, again, is not um, as in focus as this side. This side will get more of the harsh fur lines. Now I'm going to take a shading tool and just smudge this into the paper. I want to soften that out. Let the gray of the paper work for me here. And when you get these charcoal pencils, if you're just ordering them, get a bunch of them. I always get several, especially the white charcoal. I use it for my, um, when I'm working with acrylic paints, I use it for so many different things. Also, if somebody could post this in our Facebook and our MeWe groups, I, for, I was busy trying to fix whatever was going on with YouTube and forgot to, well, I didn't forget, I just didn't get time to share. I really should have scheduled those. up to this ear. So right now I'm not focused so much on detail as I am my values. Where are my lights and where are my darks? And especially this side where everything is not super in focus. So now I'm going to take my shading tool again and let's just soften this out. And the cool thing with charcoal, you can go like hyper realistic, you can go photorealistic, or you can go more sketchy. I mean you've got any way you possibly want to work, charcoal can do that for you. It's such a fun medium and fast. I'm going to take a little bit of black here and smudge that up into the fur. And I used the soft pencil there so that it would smudge more. Remember, if you want it to smudge more, use your softer, your soft charcoal. And you'll get to where, like right now, I've got a decent amount of black on there. I can take that and darken up that cheek a little bit. Okay, we've got the little whiskers coming up. And eye, eyebrows, I guess. Eyelashes? No, those aren't eyelashes. I know anatomy, really. Got some tufts of hair coming up here on this guy. And then white, just right into the head. And we've, oh, I've got to say it quietly before they jump up. Thank you so much, Kristen. Look, no one's paying attention. But let's see, are they, are they ready? You boys want a super chat? That is a yes. Thank you, Kristen, for the super chat. You guys want a good super chat treat? They've been bugging me. Like, they know live stream night when I'm getting ready for it, when I set the background up. They have been following me around for the last two hours waiting for their super chats. Like, they love, don't drool. So why do you always manage to get right next to my tea? There you go. Say thank you, Kristen. Say thank you for the super chats. Okay, go lay down. Go lay down. Gibson, you better get the bed quickly without the toy. Hurry up. Lay down before Wade gets it. There's a toy in the one bed. Wade actually had toys in all the beds earlier. Gibson won't lay in those. Lay down, lay down. Gibson does not share beds, even with toys. Good boys. Okay. So back, let's go, I'm gonna skip now over to this ear and then work my way down. So I will usually do one of two things. I'll start with the eye and work out or I'll start at the ears and work down. I'm kind of doing both right now. Just the point is pick one spot. Don't worry too much. Like I don't want to work down at the bottom and then up here and just jumping all over the place. One of the mistakes I used to make, and I was actually talking about this in um, the Patreon video that you guys will be getting this week. One of the mistakes I used to make when I first started with art is I was just jumping all over the place. I'm like, okay, I mixed the perfect color of green. Let's just put green everywhere that's going to go. That's not going to work well for you. If you're trying to do something that's super realistic, your better way to go is to break it up into one little area. Only focused on this ear, and only focused here, only focused there. Focus on one little area and then work your way out slowly. You will get much, much better results. 
one of my, the reasons that I was always hesitant, actually, I need to get some glycine. One of the reasons that I was hesitant before is to do that is I always felt I was never even colored pencil, acrylic painting. I was always afraid I was not going to be able to get my color mixed the same. I would never mix that color again, or you would be able to tell where I start, like the start and stop, you wouldn't, I wouldn't get it blended smoothly. None of that's an issue. Like it's not a problem at all. So yeah, definitely break it up into small sections. So I'm gonna put a bit of glassine here and this is gonna keep me from getting charcoal all over my hands, but it also keeps the oils from my skin off the artwork. Again, this one is available if you want to bid on it over at my website right now. And that will, auction will end at 10 p.m. Central. Okay, so we've got around this ear. This is the hard. And I just wanna watch which direction that fur goes in. Now, if you are struggling to create realistic fur, no matter what type of animals, feathers, hair on people, whatever it is, Charcoal is such a good way to do studies where you're just, just pick a little patch of fur and just do a study, drawing that fur, trying to get it super, re, you know, super accurate to your reference photo. But charcoal is such a fast medium, you're gonna learn a lot faster on capturing that movement and the shape and the shadows and, and how all of that comes together. Get some little fluff here and then he's got fluff on the tip of his ear. This, the actual photo, this is an orange tabby. Now, whenever you've got a photograph that's in color, but you wanna draw it in black and white and graphite charcoal, or you're just painting in black and white, make sure it is going to be much easier on you. Make that photo black and white so you can see your values better. And what I will typically do is after I make it black and white, I adjust my values. I make changes in Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever photo editor you're using because it gives you a better idea of, will it look better if I make my darks darker, my lights lighter? Adjust that because something that looks good in color doesn't always look great. The photograph isn't, like the way you photograph for color is not the same as you photograph for black and white. So we have to make those adjustments in, in a photo editor. And that will make your job as an artist when you start drawing much, much easier. Well, good news, the white charcoal, you can't even see where my lines were from the transfer paper. Sometimes you can. So it's super bright right around that ear. Okay, now these little hairs go on top of what's back here. So this area that I need to be darker, there's a little one, little light area, I need to do that first. Otherwise, I'm gonna be trying to work between hairs. I'm just making my life a lot harder than it needs to be. So I am going to take my soft and I'm just lightly, very lightly gonna go over this because I don't need it super dark. Just a little bit and I'm gonna smudge that in. If you're working on colored paper like this, let the color of the paper work for you. I'm not trying to cover it all. I'm, I think it's great if some of this gray shows through. That's why I chose gray. But it can look good too if you're using, because Kemsen makes a lot of different colored papers. If you're using like their blue and you let the blue show through, that'll look great too. Also, oh, here we go. I have to say it quietly. Nobody's noticing. You boys want a super chat? D Lynn Creative Arts, thank you so much for the super chat. The boys, thank you too. You guys are getting spoiled. Oh my gosh, back up. And it's your favorite. Yes, that's very tasty, huh? Say thank you. Yes, good boys. Okay, go lay down and choke on it. That's great. Here, want the Heimlich? You better. This is not how you do the Heimlich. Okay, go lay down. You're good. Don't don't look at me with sad puppy eyes. Say thank you to Lynn and lay down. Lay down. Lay down, bad cow. Go lay down. Uh oh. There's the. <laughs> See the problem? He's like, I can't do it. There's a toy in the. Fine, I'll rescue you. Such a drama queen, big baby. Okay, lay down. Knew that was gonna be a problem. Bet toy touched my bed and I hates it. Dog is so weird. Okay, <laughs> thank you again. Okay. So let's go ahead and shade this a bit more. I just wanna get some variation so it's not one solid color. Some of this can be even a little lighter. So let's get some of the light in here. 
Now, one of the things a lot of artists when they're doing pet portraits will skip over is the detailing in the ears. Don't do that. If you, that will really bring down the entire piece. When you put so much detail everywhere else in the ears, you're like, oh, it's just the inside of an ear, it's solid. It's not really look at the details in there. It'll make a huge difference to your end result. I'm just gonna smudge that down. And I know some of you guys are like me. I've read some of the comments where you guys were worried about the dryness, like with pan pastel, or not pan pastels, with regular pastel pencils, I can't do it. The dryness, the chalky feel freaks me out. I've got issues. Charcoal does not do that to me. So I'm not, I, like even when it gets on my hands, my hands are super dirty. It doesn't cause any issues. It doesn't, like the weird dry feel, I don't find really with the charcoal that I did with the pan, pa or no, I keep saying pan pastels, pan pastels don't do that with the pastels. So if you're hesitant to try charcoal because of that, give it a try because it, at least for me, I've not had any issues and I'm pretty weird. Just looking at that photo. Now I can start getting some of these individual hairs in there. Make sure that you don't just do a bunch of perfectly straight lines. Straight lines have a very unnatural feel. It'll make the fur look wiry. Look how it curves. And don't cover all the gray completely. I want some of that gray of the paper to show. Saving me time so I don't have to come back through and add darks everywhere. Well, I do need some darks in here, just a little. And then we'll smudge that out. Whoops. What I typically do with the, the shading tool, I keep one side for the black charcoal and then the other side for the white so that I don't mix them too much. But if it gets, starts to get muddy, because they will start mixing it quite a bit. If they start to get muddy, I just wipe it off on a paper towel. Quick tip, the, do I have one over here? I may not, yes I do. These, these here are not for sharpening these. These two things have nothing to do with each other. These are for sharpening these, <laughs> it's for your pencils. It's great for colored pencils, the main thing that I'll sharpen with them. You can use them for charcoal, but past the colored pencils, I get the best results out of when you want that really sharp tip. These, you don't sharpen. If they start to get dull, get a new one. You sharpen, you rub this on here and it gets fluffy and rough. And maybe there's some te textures that would kind of be okay with that, but you lose a lot of control. You basically ruin your shading tools if you try to sharpen them. Um, these, the, I mean, I will have some, I've got one somewhere that is, I've been using, well, at least since I was teaching in California back in 2005, and I'm still using. So we're almost, gosh, 15 years, I'm old. Yeah, it's, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it other than it got shut in a car door. So it has a little handle somewhere. Actually, it's probably over here somewhere. If I pull it out later, I'll show you. Um, it's straightened out a little over the years, but I kept it. It still works fine. I use it mostly for graphite, but oh, wait, is this it? Yeah, this is it. This one got shut in the car door. This one, at least since 2005, and I just use it for my thumb. But the point is, it's, well, it's still got, the points are fine. You don't need to sharpen these. You will ruin them. Oops, speaking of sharpening things, let's soften that out. That's a bit too sharp. When you see me flipping this over, it's just because I keep putting the, the dark side versus the light side. It's so just adjusting there. And the majority of my time is typically spent around the ears and the eyes when I do pet portraits and the nose. The nose will take a little bit. Well, not this one, but in like dogs, that will typically take a bit longer. Now this area here, way too dark, not a problem because I can come back over with the white pencil. There we go. few little white marks on the tuft there. A little bit in here, not too much. I'm going to soften that out. Now the more lines I put here, the more dense this fur is going to start looking. And then I'm gonna also soften that out just a bit. I wanna leave some of that gray showing through. Okay, I'm gonna scooch over. We're gonna go down to his eye and start working our way out. Oh, 
Okay, and let's start with, we've got a lot of white around here. Again, watch the direction that the fur is moving in. It's very easy to make a couple of pencil strokes and think it looks great and then quickly realize that it all looks the same. One second, I'm just making sure I'm caught up. Yeah, I'm caught up on that. Okay. So here, see how it switches directions and starts curving out? You don't, and this is a mistake that a lot of artists make. They think that more detail is going to make it look more realistic. No, your values, are your lights right? Your, your lights and your darks where they the way they should be? And are, in this case, is your fur going the right direction? Those are the things that are going to make a way bigger difference. Your detail, it can look super realistic it, even with loose detail if you've got your values correct and in this case the fur is going in the right direction. One of the things that makes tends to make people when they do uh, pet portraits or animals at all that will start to make it look flat is when they just they do one stroke for the fur and think it looks great and just keep repeating it again and again and again and that is how you end up with something that is very, very flat, very unnatural looking. I'm using the hard lead here. And again, I don't care, I actually prefer usually, I will hype up my contrast a bit, make my darks a little darker, my lights a little lighter. Actually, I've got too many pencils in my hand. Let me put the soft one down so I don't mix those up. Okay, and we've got this very white area. It's pretty solid here. I thought I was going to need white or water around the eye but it, to clean up the edges, but they're sharp enough. So we will not add that. But with your charcoal, you can add water and just get super harsh, like super clear, clear um, lines if you need to. I avoid it when possible on cans and tents because this stuff is like a sponge. So it takes a little bit longer to dry. I'm gonna come back through because I smudged that a bit too much with the eye right along the bottom there. For those of you watching, let me know how many of you guys have cats? What are their names? We've got a little bit of a light area here. It's up a little bit more. I need to pull the dark up too. My dark is not down or up high enough. Round that up. Again, just opening that up a bit more. I'm gonna pull that one down and then I can pull the white down a little bit further in here. Okay, and I'm going to start working up towards the forehead now. I'm going to use the soft one because this is going to blend out a lot, but I still want to pay attention what direction is that fur moving, even though it's very soft. Lightly go over that. You don't want to over blend with the charcoal. You can do, you can blend to the point where you lose your definite lights and darks where everything just starts mixing together. 
So you, you can see it doesn't take a whole lot to blend that out, especially in this case because I'm using soft or extra soft. For those of you who do pet portraits, charcoal is a great way to add something that you can get done fairly quickly, but also not, not take, you know, you, you can offer a lower cost port, I can't talk. You can offer a lower cost port, pet portrait because like if I were to do this in colored pencil, I may spend weeks on it. But I can do this pretty quickly, usually in one night I can get something done, well this size I can get done in a night. But you can offer it for a lot less because it's not gonna take you, the supplies are cheaper, the time is cheaper. So it's, it's an additional medium that you can add to your portfolio or your offerings if you are a portrait artist, both for people and animals. Just add a little bit, smudge it out some. I don't want to smudge so much that I lose it. And this guy will come in a black mat. So it's a five by seven, the black mat will be an eight by 10. So your overall like frame size you would want to put this in would be an eight by 10. One of the things that I like to do with something like this, I like to do custom si or standard sizes as much as possible because they don't require a custom mat or a custom frame. It makes it much easier for the buyer when you can go with a standard size. Another tip, if you are a pet portrait artist, notice how much room I took on this and the mat, let me show you, this is not the same mat, this is a white mat, this will come in a black mat, but this is the size of the mat. That cat's face fills up the entire thing. That is a huge thing. Like, yeah, I'm gonna call it a mistake. It's a mistake, because it just looks terrible. Don't draw this tiny little head in the middle of the paper. Fill that thing out. Fill, like, know what size your mat's gonna be so you can fill that out, but fill it out. Take up that space. It will look so much better than if you're keeping it all super tiny, just kind of a little head floating in there. Go off the page. Don't, don't try to, and I don't like the floating head look either. I used to do this. All of mine were floating heads. And when I started making it so it filled up the entire canvas or the entire paper, it looked so much better. Use up that space. You do not want your prime real estate to be blank background. So even though I'm gonna blend that, I still have it going in the right direction. So when I softly go over that, we can still see where that fluff moves. You also really wanna watch where is the fur long versus short. That's gonna make a big difference in that end result. So like right here, it's pretty short, little tufts. And as we move out towards the neck, it really gets fluffy and long. Looks like a lot of you guys are cat people. Let me know if you want me to do more cats. We can get some kittens, we can do some cats of different ages, different fur type, I can certainly do more. They're fun to draw. So now I'm gonna start moving my way out here. Actually, let's take you. So you curve this way and we're gonna come right on down Right now I'm just mapping out about where these little light areas are. I'm not worrying about the values so much there. I'm just kind of figuring out where things are gonna go. Now the fur here, look how it curves. Fur is starting to swerve down. Now over the bridge of the nose, most of this fur will be very, very soft. We don't need to try to, you don't want it to be like this. I see people do that a lot, like too much detail. You don't need that much. Just a little bit um, of oh, that hint, but most of it just solid because it's so short. Let's 
soften that up. I'm going to switch over. Whoops, I'm going to throw the pencil on the floor is what I'm going to do. Switch over to the hard so I've got more control here. Remember, the hard lead is not going to smudge out as much, which is why I chose that here. part of his little cheek. And this is pretty solid. There's not, we're not trying to put in the individual furs there because that is more out of focus. Now this one, we want to watch the direction of the fur. Actually, before I do too much there, I want to get a bit of a shadow. I'm going to take the soft pencil. And I want to create the shadow right under that lip. And I'm going to pull that all the way around. A little bit here. And down just a bit so that the white has something to show up over. Now I'll smudge that out. Now this is going to look way too dark, but I need something so that the white will show up over it. I can do the same thing right now while I'm at it. Take that soft pencil again. Where the whiskers are going to come out from. Let's see, there's one, two, three and a half. One, two, one, two, three and a half. Okay, there's the half. Just counting where things go. And just pulling that down. And I'm gonna pull this. These are gonna get softened. And right now they'll be too dark, that's fine. We've got the shadow lightly comes up and around. And then we've got the shadow in the face and through here. I'm gonna go ahead and darken some of this up now. Keep looking at that reference photo. You can see my head moving back and forth. I am looking at that photo more than I am my actual artwork. I'm going to soften that out. Again, it's fine that this is too dark right now. I cannot tell you tonight so how many times I've used hard instead of the soft one. It's not that big of a deal, honestly. If, if it's not blending for you, switch pencils. But it's not like, oh my gosh, I used the wrong one, I ruined it. No big deal. There's nothing stressful about this. Nothing you can't fix. It is a very, very forgiving medium. Okay, now watch how the direction these go. Actually, I'm going to sharpen this pencil. Which sharpener is this? This has been my favorite lately. M&R, made in Germany. I don't know what it is, but it's got the three. This has been, like the blades on this thing have stayed so sharp for so long. I don't know why, but it's amazing. Get those little lines in there. And then these ones, see how these curve out? I am not pushing very hard. If I push very hard with this, that lead is just going to break anyway because charcoal is very soft. Tiny, tiny little hairs in here. Make sure they overlap. That is a huge deal. If they are not overlapping, they won't look right. Now, 
Now, if I were doing a pet portrait, I am certainly going to take more time and make sure I capture everything about that cat, the expression, everything. On something like this, where I'm just drawing any cute cat, like it doesn't, I don't know who the owner is of this one, so they're not gonna notice the difference. I'm not gonna worry that much if my expression is slightly off. But if you're a pet portrait artist, those are things that you do want to watch. Like is the eye open a little, like my eye could be open a little bit more if I wanted to really go by this reference photo. Things like that. Here we've got it more solid. I'll do more overlapping. Now you can really see why we had to get that dark first so that I can layer this over the dark. You can keep looking at the direction of the fur. When does it switch? Because it constantly switches directions. You can see how quickly we can go through this. It's why it makes it such a great practice when you are learning fur. This is one of the, really for just anything. If let's say you're drawing roses and you're struggling with that, it is the best medium for quickly doing these studies. Plus it looks awesome. Now I will say it looks a little bit more harsh for some reason on the video. This is a little bit softer. I am blending mine out softer than what it looks like for you guys. That is not something you often hear me say, that it looks too sharp on video. And these same techniques, a raccoon, like anything with fur, it's going to be just like this. If you struggle with drawing tiger fur, practice with charcoal, do a study like this. Soften that out a bit. I'm using the hard lead just to lightly go over it so that it softens. And we've got the little eyelash guy here from this area. Now don't get too excited to do your whiskers and that sort of thing early on because you want that, you need the background part first. You will make your job much harder, even though it will look so much better once you get the whiskers in. Everyone gets excited to do the whiskers. But if you do that too soon, you're making your life more difficult. So this is all getting cut off by the mat, but I wanna make sure I go a little bit wider than where the mat is going to be, so that as I reposition that, I'm not having to go back in and fill in an area that didn't quite get covered with the mat, if that makes sense. A little bit of a highlight there. Okay, let's go back down here to the chin. Oh, same thing, we've got a shadow that I've got to get in first, so let's grab the extra soft. We've got a definite shadow right here. And this is really soft fur, so we're just gonna smudge that on out. But I do wanna smudge it the direction of the fur. I wonder how many times I've said that in this video, the direction of the fur. It's very serious, very important. If you have questions, leave them now. We'll be answering all of that at the end or after the lesson. And if you are enjoying these videos or the, let me try that again. If you are enjoying these lessons and you would like to watch some of my more advanced lessons, you can check that out over on Patreon or check these, or I've got tons of these lessons here on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of those. I did not say that very well. That's gonna be fun to edit. See how that fur changes direction. But see now where that dark is. That's why we had to do the dark first so that this will pull in. And that's 
the main thing is just paying attention. Well, not the main thing, obviously, the direction of the fur, because that is the word of the day, words of the day. But which, how do you layer it? Where do you put the dark down versus the light down? In most cases, you're going to put your dark down first and then get that light on top. Right now, his fur is looking really wiry. It's a little too sharp. So I will definitely spend some time softening that out with the blending tool. Let's grab that. And just soften that up. So if you leave it too wiry or too stringy, too defined, it won't look as soft. If you want to soften it, just go back up, just slightly blend that out. Okay, so we're going to move back over here. Move this over just a bit. to quietly let's see you know is that comfy Gibson that is not how beds work like you have that whole bed and you're using your snoot the floor for your snoot well we'll fix that for you thank you so much Robin for the super chat wow they didn't even bounce up you boys not want a super chat like we, we didn't think it was true we didn't think it was really going to happen thank you Robin okay you boys get a super chat yeah Oh, that's going to be tasty. Gibson's whole head, you can never see because he's so dark. Here, show him your chatters. You got the chatters? You can't, uh, greyhounds are funny. They have teeth chatters where they're, they're like, almost like they're cold, but it's because they're super excited. Oh, that's good. Ow. Thank you, jerk. Don't bite me. You're not doing a good job today. Working with Wade to not bite me when he takes treats? Yeah, I don't think it's ever going to happen because... He's just too, too motivated. Okay, go lay down. Thank you again, Robin. Lay down. Lay, you'll go too. Super tasty. And we got to stretch first. Wade, no one wants to watch you lick. Wade, no chewing. He's like, but my belly is itchy. Lay down. 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 That camera is not in focus at all. Down. All the way. Wade, leave it. Like, but I have grass allergies and they make me itch. Okay. Um, the paper is not speckled. It no, this one is a solid gray, but there is a texture to it. So that's probably what you're seeing. Okay. So we've got this whole area in here. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna get some of the darks in first. Where is my soft? And this does not need to be exact. Close is fine. Actually, let's move this out of the way because I need to be able to line up where the dark areas are going to go. So we've got some in here. Now his fur is a little bit like he could have used a brush. He's got a little bit of matting going on. I'm not going to include that but I will separate some of these chunks. The more of the chunks I separate it, the more he looks like he's going to need to be brushed. So I'm gonna go somewhere in between what the reference photo has and that he was recently groomed. And when you do, if you're a pet portrait artist, that's something that you wanna check with your clients. When they provide a reference photo, sometimes the, the animal has not been recently groomed, but they will want it to look like they were. So that is always something that you wanna check with them. I'm just kind of mapping these out. Most of this gets cut off by the map, but again, we're still gonna take it out a little bit further. Yeah, his fur is really stringy in here. I want him to look much softer. Okay, and I'm going to soften that up. Okay. 
And if you are looking for a medium to practice with, because this is something that I hear a lot from people, they're worried about wasting their materials, which is a whole other subject. I don't think you can, personally, I don't think you can waste, well, there's not much you can do to waste art materials besides not using them. But this is said, it's one of the most inexpensive mediums. So you can do a ton of studies. You can get a big pack, like the Canson Me 10s works great. You can get a pad of this. Um, I don't actually know the price off the top of my head, but you can get a fair amount. Um, you can get it both in an actual pad, like your normal sketch pad type paper, or you can get it in individual sheets, which I think is cheaper. Like you can get just a ton of gray or a ton of whatever color you want. softening that out. Now we can go on with the white. Oh, he's looking so cute. I'll show you in the other camera in a moment because um, he's this is picking up the white really kind of weird. He's much softer looking. Okay, so we've got, I'm just going to start out here. Let's see, this clump of fur comes right out. It's really soft, slightly out of focus. I'm just going to hold that pencil to the side. Fade out because that's going to get chopped off by the mat anyway. Okay, as we start getting in focus, I'll switch the way I'm holding that. Let's go ahead and for this out of focus portion, the really soft, blend that out first. Needs to be a lot lighter. I'm gonna go back over that. And I want this to be softer than this. So this will be a little bit more defined and that helps push this portion back. Because the colors are very similar, but being that the texture is different, that's going to really help. Now we can start pulling the individual clumps. Of course, come back through here. Pull that down a bit more. Give him a poofy little chin. A few areas that need to be way brighter. Just work right back over those. And when this is done, I'm going to put a layer, uh, I will lightly mist it with Spectrafix. And that will be what I seal it with. See right now, I pulled this down too far, completely changed his face. I wanna push that back up a little bit. It's a bit too much. See what I mean? Very forgiving, and this is why I think it's such a great medium to practice things with. Inexpensive, forgiving, you can go through it quickly. You will just improve so fast if you do these little studies with charcoal. I'm turning into a charcoal salesperson. I should buy stocks in it. I mean, I've never bought stocks before, but if I was going to, that seems like the way to go. And we'll start getting some of these smaller clumps because this area in here is aimed at the viewer more. It's curved out. Well, the fur is shorter, but it's also aimed at the viewer. So it will be much smaller and we'll get longer as they flatten out and as the fur gets longer. So you've got two things causing that here. But see, I'm letting the dark peek through. And don't just, like right now I have almost all little triangles. Don't just do triangles. That's starting to look too much. Start overlapping. But you will have the fur where it is kind of in a triangle shape because you've got a base and they clump together at the tips. Just don't make them all triangles. Again, all of this is off. You're not gonna see any of that once it's matted. And I'll show you what the mats look like. The red eye tree frog that I did last week, I will show that later. Um, so you can see how, how the mats look on these. They're really nice. I get them from Amazon from a seller called Golden State Art. And you can get them in bulk for fairly cheap compared to what you would buy them for individually at an art store. So if you have a lot of work to mat, those are helpful. I'll put a link in the video description. 
can't see these clumps. And here again, we're back to a lot shorter. Watch the direction on that reference photo. This is what you don't want to do. See how I've just got little lines individually? That won't look good. They've got to clump and cluster together in overlap. And in here, let's see, we've got this whole section in the ear. up. Super short little hairs. Again, make sure they're overlapping. Watch how they clump. One of the things that you can do if you're having a hard time really getting the movement of the fur, trace it. Take a, a pen or like the stylus that I use with the tracing and transfer paper and just go over your reference photo to get a feel for how that fur moves. You can use that to sort of train your hand in that movement. You will notice so much more by doing that than eyeballing it. Like if it just keeps not coming out right, try doing that. That'll really help. Okay, let's soften some of this up. I don't want to overblend it because I do want to be able to see that definition between the light and the dark. This is just a little bit to give him nice soft fur. And that looks so much softer in person. I'll show you in a moment here. That is really coming out a very harsh, odd look there. Now let me see if I can fix that on this camera really quick. By really quick, we all know I don't mean really quick at all. I'll make the attempt. Let's see. Oh, it's not even giving me a way to focus it. That could be a weird, huh? I have not seen that before. It's not wanting me to do. Very odd. Well, never mind then. We'll do it this way. Let me show you what this guy's looking like. Hopefully, it will show up better here. He's very soft. Yeah, that's a much better. You can see how much softer that looks. The cam other camera is showing a really harsh look to, to him, but he's got very, very soft fur just from blending out a little bit more. Um, again, that is really an odd look there on the camera is just a little too harsh here definitely looking better in person um, so there we go there is the finished guy and one of the, my next tip if you're going to mat that make sure hold the mat there oh we're missing whiskers he's not done but i'm I'll, like usual sign him before i'm gonna hold the mat where i want my signature to go because if I would have signed down at the bottom, which would have felt more natural to me at the time, that would not, that would have gotten completely cut off. There we go. Now he needs whiskers. I don't know how I missed that. Like the, my favorite part and I just was not going to include them apparently. Art of Raven D said, I actually forgot whiskers once. <laughs> Yeah, it happens. Okay, so we've got those ones, and then let's see. So we've got one that starts about here, and it's going to come up here. A little bit more detail, just because I can. 
Okay, this was definitely a really fun project. I want to soften that out a bit. Okay, now he's done. This one's a little bit, I want to soften this one up just a bit. And I'm going to do that by lightly going over that. That's better. I want it to be there. It was just a little, you can't tell in, in the thing. In person, it's soft now. So there we go. I want to actually, I'm going to do the hint of a few more back here. You can kind of see in the reference photo, a few little hairs sticking out. Okay, I'm calling him done. After I missed him with the Spectre Fix, there's a good chance he's gonna need another spray. Again, you can bid for him over on my website, blockery.com, the link is in the video description. And okay, so let me move some of this out of the way because I'll probably use both. I don't know where all I'm gonna show you my Vista print order. Actually, I've got a couple things to show you. I have all kinds of fun things. I've been shopping this week and I'm completely broke now. It got a little out of hand. Okay, let's scooch all of these guys over. I really need to do a full organization of my studio. It is a mess since Aquashella. Things are just getting thrown everywhere. Okay. So, the first thing I'm going to show you are my new phone cases. And this is fun if you wanna get your artwork printed on these. And I'm going to start ordering. I decided it would be fun. I know for me, I want to, I like phone cases. I like to get new cases. I wanted to see what it would look like with my artwork. Back years ago, there was a company who used to print them and they were amazing. Well, now there's so many different cases. It's sometimes hard finding a company that has the case for your phone. I know with me, I do sell them on uh, my Fine Art America site, but it's only iPhone. I don't use Apple products, so that doesn't do me any good. So I decided I'm going to start reviewing, buying cases. I see advertiser advertisements all over the internet. I'm gonna start buying them reviewing them for you guys so you know if it's something you might want of your artwork on your own phone so this one is by case envy i'll put a link in the description but this is i did my flamingo and the case that i did actually did two flamingos i'm on a flamingo kick but the case here let's go to that one so this is a two-part case i did the one that's supposed to be a little bit more sturdy it's got the outer case with the artwork on it and you can see the artwork is gorgeous it's actually a little bit better in person here that's a little washed out but it looked so good on this and i went with a glossy case so because i know i'm going to get paint all over it inevitably i always have paint on my hands it ends up on my phone case i wanted it to be able to wipe off easily and then so these two just go together and it pops on and off the phone the things that i'm not sure about on this one if you look at the corners that the that's just the plastic stuff i mean you've got the actual uh, let me pull this one out you've got the rubbery stuff inside of it so i think i feel like the phone is pretty well protected but i have a feeling if i drop this this hard plastic i don't know how many drops it's going to manage to live through that's kind of that's not in focus but i mean the actual corners are the hard plastic and i ha i don't know we'll see i drop my phone often enough Sooner or later, we're going to find out how it handles it, but that seems a little bit questionable. I do like, in my case, it has the rim that comes out in front of that, in front of my cameras. This is the Samsung S22 Ultra, so the, the camera lenses come out. They did plan well enough that that sticks out and it protects the lenses if it's laying flat on something, which is nice. Um, so, I mean, I've been pretty happy with it. I normally use OtterBoxes, and I'll show you a comparison here between these two. Whoops, that's not the camera I wanted. So the OtterBox, you can see, is much larger. This is the middle range OtterBox. 
but it's also like I've been using it for a year now and it is warped you can see here like it just it's not lining up on my phone very nicely at all but there's the difference in size um, it's the OtterBox is quite a bit bigger you can see um, but so I'm sure the OtterBox is I feel like the OtterBox is more protection obviously it's an OtterBox but it's also a big ugly OtterBox so anyway yeah these I'm super happy with it's not something that I'm selling I don't even know like I haven't found a company that I would print my work and then sell it from, from various phones like this. But if you wanna get your own artwork printed on a phone case, this I think is really, really cool. I may, I'm trying to think, I may be able to do something for patrons where I allow you guys to use my artwork, like for the $19 tier, maybe that I'll add that as a reward. Like you could contact me and I'll send you the file and you could print it. I would give you permission to print it at those websites. So maybe we'll do that. Um, if any of you are interested in that, but I mean, you can do your own artwork and I think that's the, the really fun thing there is to do your own. You can obviously do photos of your dogs or whatever, but I really like the idea of artwork. Both of these, I both, I did glossy on both. They both printed beautifully. Again, that is case and the, I'll have to, I'll, I'll update you in the future to let you know how it handles when I have in, inevitably drop the phone. But I was also worried of being the gloss if it would start sliding off tables and stuff. It's not really sliding around a lot. I had another one that had that glossy type finish. That thing was sliding off everything. Like you would touch it and it would go flying. So it protected the phone because it kept flying off everything I set it on. But that hasn't been an issue. Things are, are staying put. It's probably because the rim around the, actually I bet that's why it's that rubbery bit around the camera is keeping it from sliding. But yeah, they're pretty cool. Next thing I wanted to share with you, I spent $1,600 at Vista Print. Let's see what it got me. I have not even opened the box yet. $1,600, like that is just, I cried a little. What I mainly got, I, uh, these are the things, this is like five months worth of stuff I need for, for Patreon. So let's pull this over. Actually, we'll start with the stickers because that's the smallest one. So our first uh, thing to open is this bag. So I guess you get first-hand review on how good these are. I mean, I've ordered from them a million times and normally they're good. One of the things I will say with Vista Print, whenever there's been an issue where the print quality I wasn't happy with anything, they always fix it. All, I would say almost without question. Every once in a while I'll get someone weird who's like, can you send me a photo? Can you send this? Sure. I mean, it won't matter. You still have to fix it, but yeah. Okay. So these are the stickers that come with the $19 tier. Oh, these are cute. Let's actually, we can show, what wrong one. Let's pull these here. So I got four packs of stickers. I think I got sets of 100. Now these, pretty much everything with Vistaprint, I would, let's do it here. Almost everything I get with Vistaprint, I would recommend wait till they're on sale. Oh yeah, that came out cute. The little warbler acrylic painting. Oh, I love him. So we got him, I've got a pack. You can see it's a lot of stickers. So I've got a pack of 100 of those. And you, if you do art, like even if you're not worried about what you're selling on Patreon or anything, like you're not doing that, you can sell, wow, these quality, these are thicker than some of the ones I've had lately. We got the easel is my happy place with the cherry painting. Oh, these are cute. I like these. No, you stay put. We've got, oh, you guys are gonna like this one. We've got, you were made to create with chicken. And I make these stickers, I just Photoshop whatever the uh, uh, other painting I have and Photoshop them into whatever. We've got the dolphin tail from a recent painting. The only way to waste art supplies is to use, is to not use them. So that's a fun sticker. So these are all stickers that I send out with Patreon, but I can also take them with me to art shows. Or you could make a pack, like maybe sell a pack once I have enough stickers left over from, like, because I always have extra from Patreon. I could sell packs of 10 stickers for now the price is a little weird. I end up spending, I think these are, if on sale and if I get a hundred of them, they're like 68 cents I think I paid for these a piece. But I had to get a hundred. I don't need a hundred. So if I only needed 50, I'm gonna be paying more per sticker by a long shot. So it, it can end up being more like a dollar per sticker. So that's, it. it's not one of the cheaper things that I offer, um, that's for sure. But they are really fun. So you want to keep that in mind, your pricing when you're figuring, like when you're shopping for these, how many are you going to sell? Are you going to be able to make back what you just spent on them? So definitely um, a thing. Now this huge box, I don't know how much it weighs, but I know that it's over 35 pounds. 
Let's slide this over. Oh my gosh. That is big. This is going to take a bit to go through. So first we have envelopes, lots and lots and lots of envelopes. Let me, actually, I'm going to switch cameras. No, that probably wouldn't work either. Um, tons of these. So we're just going to move these out of the way because they seem to be blocking everything else good. There's so many envelopes. So what I do with these, I take them with me to when I do Aquashala. They're actually really help helpful for putting smaller prints in or stickers. Um, they come free. I, I upgrade, I pay for fancier envelopes for Patreon. Again, this is the $19 Patreon. I'll show you those. But they also come with those free white ones. Well, I don't use the white ones, but they're handy to have if you do art shows or like if I, when I, um, when someone buys, like let's say the cat tonight, they will get a card that says thank you and I, I stick it in those white envelopes. These are the custom envelopes that I get. They have glitch, they're teal of course. They've got my PO box on the outside and of course glitch on the front. So these are the ones that the $19 tier get their card in. And I don't remember how much those cost. I know, again, I get them when they're on sale so it's gonna be different depending on when you bought them. So I got two packs of those. And I think, how many are in here? I don't know, that's not helpful, huh? Okay. Oh, oh my God. How many did I order of this? Oh my gosh. So I went crazy so that I'd have them for the next aqua shot. <laughs> Holy crap. There's so many in here. Um, I got mouse pads. I got apparently a lot of mouse pads. These cost me, I think about $7 a piece, just under $7 each. So I'll sell them for 20 each at aqua Shella. and I'll show you. I like that these ones are individually wrapped because I bought these in the past and they weren't and they get like damaged just from storage. So this is nice. Oh, but I have to open this all the way because it's really sealed. Wow. Let's just open the top off up so I can slide it back in. Oh, these are nice. So here's the mouse pad with the octopus on it. They smell weird. They smell like rubber. Um, so we got a bunch of those. That printed really good. I was surprised last year at Aquashella, I had some mouse pads and I was surprised how many people wanted them. Like really surprised. I wouldn't have thought that would be such a popular thing. Maybe I don't think about it because I don't, I use a trackball mouse, so I don't use mouse pads. But, and chicken eats mouse pads if I have one on my desk. So all around, not a good idea. But yeah, these are really, I mean, again, you know, 20 bucks. So I'm making a 14, 13, $14 profit if one sells. Now the downside when you order stuff like this for prints when you're selling is you have to store it until they sell. So it's not like you sometimes look at things and go, oh wow, a $15 profit or almost a 15. Yeah, but I have to store it for years before it sells in many cases. Um, we've got, I'm just going to leave them in here, my clownfish and anemone. Most of what I got, well, I think all of what I got because I'll sell these at Aquashella were fish related. We've got my rose, wait, how does he go? He goes this way. My, that is not right. That is the way he goes. So we've got, I, I, I have issues. Um, goldfish and roses, more of the octopus. I got a lot of the octopus one, more of the clownfish. Oh, I got the one, the painting I did that is over my reef tank. I got that guy. Here's, oh my gosh, I must have ordered like 10 of the octopus. Here's more of those. There's like a stack of two or three in each of these. More of these and more. More of the goldfish. These are upside down, so I don't know what's coming. More. There's so many. Like I went... They were on sale. I wanted to buy them and have them this year for Aquashella, but they weren't on sale until like a few days before Aquashella started. I've been checking all year and I never catch them at the right time. So, and more, 
and more. <laughs> They're all the same ones. But yeah, that's kind of a fun thing to have. So I am not unhappy with that purchase. Okay, what's next? Postcards and cards. That's what the rest of this is going to be. So I'll start taking some of these out and show you, show you the quality. Now these ones, the postcards, if you are on the $9, $9 or $14 tiers on Patreon, you get a postcard. The postcards just get sent as a postcard, it's just a postcard. If you want it as like a print, because some people will complain that the post office, and I understand the complaint, the post office will stamp all over it. I mean, it's a postcard. That's how postcards are sent. So if you want it to where it's like in perfect condition, the $19 tier, yours comes in the envelope with the print and the postcard is all in there. So there's no, no damage normally with those. But um, people have asked me to send these in envelopes, but it, I would have to, the postage, I would have to raise the price quite a bit for Patreon, which I do need to do anyway. Patreon is going to go up in price for only new people. If you're already a member, and so if you're considering, sign up now because whoever is currently a member when I raise the prices, you guys are gonna get locked into that price. I will never raise it on you guys. It'll be for newcomers coming in. I'm gonna raise it by like a dollar or two. I have not raised my Patreon prices since 2014. And inflation. So I think that with this economy, you know, it, it's gonna be time. But if you are already a member, and I'm probably gonna do this in about two months, so here's my announcement. In about two months or so, I am going to raise it probably by a dollar for most, probably all the tiers. Um, po po God, postage went up so much from when I started this. Like I just at least need to cover my cost of the prices of everything going up. Postcards are more, everything has gotten more expensive so I can't afford to keep it where it's at. So again, if you are currently a member, you're locked in. As long as you're currently you know, signed up, that's not going away for your guys' price is what it is right now. But I will be making for new people going up a dollar. So anyway, there you go. So this is the postcard. This is coming for July. So these ones won't go out until August. So the way that pa the Patreon postcards work, like the ones that are, are set to go out, April's should have gone out in May. March's should have gone out in April. It's always that month behind. I'm, I'm getting those two will be done this week. But yeah, so this one will not go out until it's for July. So it'll go out in August, but we've got the watercolor from the live stream. That printed so pretty. I'm so happy with those. So we've got you, and I ordered 500 of each of these postcards. So that one. Oh, I'm excited to see how this printed. I'll show you. If you've got art questions, leave those now. I'll be answering that after I finish with our show and tell. Come out. Oh, it printed good. The oranges and colored pencil. This is May's, so this will go out in June, which means in a couple of weeks I'll be working on this batch. I'm so happy. Like the quality, the print, that is one of the things. And these are nicer thick cards. The quality of the Vista print are nice. Now I do gloss on postcards. I do matte finish on the mini prints, and I'll show you those. But this is that looks good. And there's again 500 of that. Ooh, I'm, I'm worried about this one because the dark stuff always prints really dark, but sometimes that makes it better. Sometimes it means I need to have them reprint it. We'll see. Come on. So this is March that should have gone out in April. <gasps> it printed perfect. I, had to, I have to lighten it before I send it to them because I know their stuff prints too dark. It looks so, like the color is, that nice, like that dark, dark teal, it act, instead of just, I was afraid it would come out just too sol solid black, but that is good. So those of you who are members in March, so it should have gone out in April, you will be getting this in the next week or two. Actually, I need to order stamps still. So when those come, so that looks great. 500 of those. Okay, there's more of the oranges. There's the other stack of those ones. Ooh, this one I'm excited to see too. I think I'm, I'm excited to see them all. We have, come on, let come out. So there's, the way these are stacked, they, they actually have gotten really good. They used to not be so good at the way I, they've had to replace these several times for me because they used to just put a wrap or like a ring around it, but the corners would get damaged in shipping. They now wrap these in a way that they don't get damaged. Like it is rare that one of them ha isn't perfect. 
Oh, that came out good. It's a little lighter than the original, which I like. So this is April's that should be going out in May. So that will be going out this week. So the other warbler, that printed so perfect. I'm excited. Yay, I love when I open these and I don't have to have any replaced. Normally I don't. It's, it's uncommon to have them replaced, but you still never know. Okay, so 500 of those. Ooh. We've got 500 of this. Come on, open up. This one is for June, so this will go out in July. Look how good it looks. Like that printed so, actually all of everywhere I've had this printed with Giclée today when I did the actual big Giclées and then these, this painting has printed great. Okay, what is next? Um, we've got that one, we've got that one. Are we done with postcards? So next are what I call the mini prints. Let's grab them stack of these and see what we've got. So what these used to be were just greeting cards and then there was a screw up with this to print in their website and they replaced all of them with, they had sent the flat ones. Well, it turned out once I had the flat ones, I like the flat ones better. So now we do the flat ones because they're more like little mini prints instead of just a greeting card. It just made more sense. So These are what the $19 and up tier gets. And now I don't know which month is gonna be for which because these don't have dates on them. I have to look at my notes. Oh, he looks so good. We've got the otter. Oh my gosh, I love that. Look at that teal. So that, and now these ones I have printed in matte. I always get the thicker cardstock. So that is an upgrade I do on all of mine. I get the thickest cardstock they have the quality, it's a pretty big difference. Even with the stickers, I try to get the thicker one. Every once in a while they'll send them. And like there was one batch of stickers that was super, super flimsy thin. The sticker itself was fine, but like whatever paper they put it on it was weirdly thin. So I'm not actually gonna leave that out because that's not gonna go back in without damaging anything. Okay, what is next? Ooh. This one, I'm dumb. I ordered this one not realizing I'd already ordered this. So this won't get used. This will just be sold eventually in packs. So it's a little bit less exciting because I'm an idiot and I already gave these to patrons. But if you're a new patron and you haven't gotten this one yet and you would prefer this over one of the others, you can always message me and let me know. But there we go. We've got the owl. Actually, we'll do this. If you are a new patron, if you sign up this, so if you sign up in, what month is it? Um, what are, what are, is it right now? June, if you sign up in June, or if you have signed up at the $19 tier, or even if you just upgraded the $19 tier, I will throw this one in for you extra because I know that you don't already have this one and I just accidentally bought a whole bunch of them. They're not cheap, but um, yeah, they're also, <laughs> and the thing is backwards. You, I mean, if you do it that way, it's right side up. But anyway, um, yeah, I'll, just you'd have to message me privately and let me know you want that if you're on the $19 tier and you don't have this yet because I have extras, I may as well send them to you guys. So there you go. Or I mean, really anytime that you've signed up, if you've signed up at the $19 tier, because I know that was one of the earlier ones. If you're on the $19 tier, you don't have that card, message me, send me a message on Patreon and I will include it in your next, your next one. Okay. Next, we've got more of that one. We've seen you. Ooh, I wanna see this one. This is one of my favorite paintings. I don't even know if I've sold it yet. I think it used to be in my office and it's not anymore. Oh, I have a good spot for this right now. I don't remember if I sold it though. But that printed so good. The dolphins in space, but also underwater. That is, I'm just so happy with the quality of these. And I was worried about this too because it's so dark, that painting is, but that came out really nice. Yay! Okay, so you, I'm, I've got a tower going over here. I don't think you can see it, but it's a little, it, it, actually here, I'll show you. It's getting a little scary of my stack of all things. <laughs> that is, that's a little dangerous. Um, I may regret that. Oh, there's the cat. You can still bid on the cat. He's on my website. 
link in the description. Bidding ends at 10 p.m. Okay, let's see what's next. Okay, more of the owl. The Lisa's a genius and didn't realize she had already ordered that. Ooh, this one. So this was the one I originally did the artwork, uh, or when I first tried the Pro Color, the Derwent Pro Color. And the thing I didn't like is that I loved the Pro Colored pencils. They had the amazing purple colors. This is before Derwent Light Fast came out, but they weren't light fast. Some of them were, some were not. The purples were not. That was like super disappointing. But the prints will be light fast. So we've got the leopard and it's got that beautiful purple. Like it captured the, per the transition between the purple and the brown. Like I'm so happy with these. Yay. Okay, what is next? We had those ones. Let me go through, I don't even know if there are more. And I got, I think, a hundred of all of these cards. Ooh, this guy. So Margay, this one was originally done with Derwent Color Soft, or no, not Derwent Color Soft, Derwent uh, Drawing Pencils. And I think that was just Derwent Drawing Pencils. There might have been a few other things in there, but that was mainly Derwent Drawing. So the Margay with the Attitude, yay! Um, more Margay. I think these are all going to be the Margay. For some reason, they sent these in little packs. The leopard. Is that everything? Dolphins, dolphins. I can flip this over and go through this faster. Yeah, I think we've been through all of them. You know, it's weird. Apparently, I have not printed the octopus. Did I not get that one? I don't think I did. So that will be coming in the future. The octopus needs to be on a mini print as well. But those are what I, my stack O Vista print. I'm gonna move my Jenga project down before things start to fall because I cannot afford to replace all of these. These were extremely expensive. But again, if you get them on sale, it's not that bad. You just have to get them on sale. I would not pay full price for any of this. And that's sometimes, sometimes I'm late on Patreon because I just forgot to order stuff so, or like I'm just waiting and behind on stuff. But sometimes it's because I've got to wait for the sale. I can't afford to have Patreon at its current price with paying these full price. I think everything I bought this day were 30% off, but if you hit your timing right, you can get them 40% off a lot, sometimes 50, but 40 is pretty normally what I wait for, but I couldn't wait any longer. So I think I ended up going with 30% with on all of these. I won't pack up the whole box. I just want to get the Jenga tower down. I'm so, like everything in this box, I am so happy with. That is always good news. I mean, other than my, I'm an idiot and bought more of the owl that I already have a ton of. I don't know how I managed that. And I think every, for every hundred of those, I probably spent $76. So it was like, here's $76 of the wrong thing. Kicking myself for that, but it'll be fun because I'll give you guys a bonus if you don't have it already. And I think that was a pretty old one, so I, I suspect a lot of you don't have that yet. But the nice thing is it's not going to cost me extra in postage for like the $19 here. I can include it in your already what you'll be getting. So it'll just take a few extra minutes for me to get that put together for you. And there we go. Okay. That's most of the important stuff. We've got that out of the way, kind of. Oh, it's that view down here too. slide this out and we'll go through your questions. Okay. Drink of tea. Again, if that is something you're interested in with Patreon, I'll do my quick plug with Patreon. If you are at the $4 tier, you get every single video I have ever made on Patreon. There are over 300 available immediately. I don't have separate tiers for like if you want this lesson, you pay, have to be on the higher tier, all tiers, every single medium, all of it, $4 a month. 
That will go up, sign up now if you wanna lock in that price because in a couple of months I'm gonna to have to raise that by about a dollar. Then I've got, you also get five reference photos every month at that tier, $9 a month. You get one postcard every month. You also get, well, sometimes it's two postcards in one month because I skipped the previous month, but you will always get what you are owed. So you get your postcard every month. And those of you who are getting postcards and cards, please, please, please check your address and make sure it's accurate and that it's even there. There are, so many of these get sent back to me and I'll contact people and no one contacts me back. I don't know, I don't know how, the, uh, it's just a mix up. So just it, double check your addresses if you've not gotten anything. So March and April, which should have gone out in April, may have not been shipped yet. But if you've got stuff from before that you've still not gotten, contact me, I will resend it to you, but we need to make sure that your addresses are correct. And let's see, um, so the $14 um, or $9 a month tier, you get our group challenge, which I need to write up for May's, has not been written yet, but you get a group challenge each month and you can do any one of our past tons of group challenges, like there's no deadline, it's just you're looking for a project, you wanna challenge yourself, that is what those are for. So you can join that, you get all of the lessons again, you get your postcard and you get 10 reference photos a month that I've taken myself that you can use in your artwork, they're royalty free for those of you who are members. Then for the $14 tier, you get all of those previous rewards, plus the coloring page, you get four coloring pages a month. I think I owe you some of that right now too, so four coloring pages and all the previous rewards. Is that it? I think there was something else on that. I forget what else. And then the $19 tier is where you get that mini print, you get a sticker, you get the postcard as well, you get, um, but your postcard comes in an envelope, so if you don't want prints all over, you know, whatever the post office does to, to postcards, that's in there. If you've got, and also if you've ordered a postcard and it comes like ripped in half, let me know, I will replace that. Um, that is like beyond what is acceptable for a post office to do. Um, you get access, like any of the reference photos I post uh, or any of my animal posts uh, at the $19 tier, if I post on MeWe or Instagram, you can use that in your own reference photos or you, as a reference photo in addition to the other reference photos I provided. So like my tree frogs, my fish, my birds, my any of that, you can use in your own artwork, royalty free. You have permission to sell and make prints of your artwork you've created with those. So you get that too, in addition to all those other rewards and a discount, I think, oh, $14 tier and $19 tier, I believe, you get a discount off any of my prints you get it at my cost. So um, there's just, I take off the markup. I just don't know. I, you, message me if you get a print because I always forget to update with the code. I would just send you a code so that you can get it at my cost. So there we go. Those are the prints that are on um, Fine Art America. So those are your tiers. If you wanna lock in those prices again, I know this sounds like such a huge Patreon pitch, but if you wanna lock in those prices, I'm just gonna start letting you guys know over the next couple months that this is the time to sign up because those of you who are signed up currently, your prices will not change. It's for new people signing up in about two months when I set that up, that's where they will be like a dollar higher. So it'll still be super cheap, but I at least need to cover my cut. Like the postage, I cannot believe how much more postage has gotten since like 2014. God, I'm old when I start saying that. Back in my day. Um, yeah, so anyway, let's go through your questions now. And again, here is the cat for those who want to bid on this guy. Heather said, I have gone through periods with YouTube where I get all notifications from you and other times I get none. Yeah, that is YouTube. Mono, one of my biggest complaints with YouTube right now is their search function. You can't find things. So let's say I wanna get an idea of oil pastels because I'm playing with those and I want like just to see what other people are doing with them for motivation, for inspiration. And I search in oil pastels. It will give me six for the, the things that I searched for. Then it will give me six suggested for you, then it'll give me six new channels for you, half of which I'm usually are already subscribed to, so it does no good there. Then it starts doing random, like here's a political thing. That had nothing to do with the oil pastels I was searching for. In the past, the way that YouTube search worked and the way that Google search, Google's doing the same thing now. Google, you don't get the same um, amount of results as you, that you used to. So I'm gonna have to start looking for a new search engine because, sorry, I'm now realizing, and I don't think people realize it, it's becoming useless. You don't realize, you just see the top six and you're like, yeah, I'll choose one of those. But I should be able to search through hundreds and hundreds of pages of oil pastels or oil paintings or like there'd be topics, oil versus acrylic painting. I was looking for that not too long ago to see what other people made, how their videos came out. And you get six 
and it's not even half the time it's not even related to the search you searched for their search engine has gotten so bad both youtube and google the same company it's useless you see what they want you to see not what you're looking for you don't even realize they're doing it like they are manipulating what they want us to see and it's really bad for as a creator and a user because as a user i can't find what i'm looking for as a creator i can't rank half the time the things that are like entertainment more entertainment like um drama related anything like that that's going to rank better but like a, a charcoal tutorial I'm not gonna rank for it um acrylic painting i can't rank for acrylics anymore at all you've got like three people and they always get your top ranks and that is it it is very hard to find you used to find so many artists and it's not just me so many artists we don't rank you can't get found for doing just regular tutorials anymore um and the youtube was like oh only these three artists are we going to share with people over and over again it is their their search engine is horrible the whole platform right now is horrible i am so but it's still the best we've got as much as i can play and it's like right now there is no better i played around i tried with rumble i'm not i don't you're not going to get found on rumble rumble i i don't like a lot about that platform like it has potential and i'm glad that there are other options but right now like the way their search works i don't like theirs either so yeah youtube right now i think is still the best we've got but yeah okay let's see heather said have you had the chance to work with the colorless blender more on the pound pastels no not since i i've just been busy with everything because my new friend which i will tell you about after i go through these questions i got a new friend and then I obsessed over researching everything about my new friend. So we'll come back to that. Uh, let's see. Monica said, so when I draw in graphite, it looks realistic. But when I do colored pencils, it's cartoony. What am I doing wrong? Mommy said hi if you missed it earlier. <laughs> hi, Monica. Um, so if you want to do this, if you're willing to send me a photo, show me a photo of both. Send it to me. I'll make a video out of it but I have to look at it to be able to tell. I'm not certain what's going on without looking at it, but Monica, send it to me, email me, lisa at lawcree.com, both of those. If you wanna be in the video, which would be fun, if you wanna just take your cell phone, record yourself saying, hi, Lisa, you know, I'm here's my mom. I wanna see mom. Um, he, let, let's, this is what's going on. How do I fix it? Show me a video of your work. Um, that would, and you just have to do it on your cell phone. I don't need something good. I don't need fancy. We just need organic. We need realistic because chances are whatever you, is going on with yours, other people are struggling with too. So it'd be really helpful to show everybody. Um, okay, next. Um, Alice said, would you make a video about an artist's website emailing list on a budget? Also, do you recommend using paid advertising to sell paintings like on Facebook or eBay? Oh, that's a good one. So I need to do more research, honestly, on that. On a budget, the on a budget part, a website's not super expensive. High end is not super expensive if you build it yourself. So you've got like the other like Weebly and, and those sorts of, of websites, but you all also could do like I do WordPress and I pay, well, I pay more for mine because I've got higher traffic volume, but like average would be $14 a month. And that's like the highest at like super good quality where you've got customer service if you have a problem. Whereas if you're with like, you, you want to avoid like GoDaddy. GoDaddy is the sleaziest company. They do everything possible. Okay, let's, let's actually break that down. What GoDaddy, let's turn that what GoDaddy does. GoDaddy has a history of, and I don't know that they're still doing it, but I would assume, but they have a history. Like you sign up and they're like, oh, it's only $5 to get your, your domain name and this is cheap and that's cheap and all these things are cheap. If you have any problems, they're like, oh, we won't help you unless you pay $20 an hour. Well, I don't know what it actually is. I'm just throwing a number out there. I forget what their actual number used to be, but they charge you an hourly rate or a set fee of like $150, $200 to fix a problem that on my website, if I had this problem, I contact the people who run it and they fix it unless I just needed more space. Like there's some things that I would pay for for them to do. But the majority of what I would contact them for that GoDaddy is like, nope, it's another $200. Their other thing that they have a huge history of doing, and this isn't just GoDaddy, this is a lot of your, your lower um, cost, like domain names and such. They, you think you're getting a deal annually, you get your, your bill, you pay for it, they lose it or say it was late, buy, they buy your domain name. So you owned it. They buy it and then try to resell it back to you for hundreds of dollars. Not such a good savings, is it? And they are notorious for that. I have heard so many stories about that happening. I've never personally experienced. So of course, what I'm going through is secondhand or you know, giving you secondhand information. But it's from people who I trust. 
that have told me about this happen and lots of people have had this happen. So when, it ta when you talk about having a website done on a budget, most of the time I say don't. I mean, you can Weebly is gonna be okay, but $15 a month, if you were serious about this, I want, I want to know my web, my domain name is not gonna get stolen by the company I am paying. I wanna know, like, you think that doesn't happen, uh-huh. They're also the number one provider, at least GoDaddy used to be for adult material. So I'm like, oh, it's actually fitting that they keep screwing over their customers. Oh, that was super inappropriate, Lisa. But they're known for just completely screwing over their customers. So a lot of these lower end ones have that reputation. Are they still doing it? I don't know, things could have changed. That's information that I knew from before and why I don't go near them or recommend a lot of the low cost ones. However, Weebly and those sorts, I don't know. They might be okay. I've not used them myself, but that might be an option. But like I said, what I'm using is a higher end one and it's $15 a month. You can get started and it's, I think it's $20 a year for your domain name, then 15 a month for your host. And I use a WordPress thing and then you've got to get your, I mean, it's not just that. Like depending on what theme you go with, you might upgrade to get a paid theme or you might use a free one. You've got a lot of options, a lot of add-ons there. So those are options for you. But I'm not, oh, Starving Artist Collective said Weebly does that. Do they stealing stuff or am I just getting part of the conversation? I might just be getting a part of the conversation. But yeah, I I don't trust the low cost ones. Like they're low cost for a reason. They're gonna make their money one way or another. They will get the money out of you. Now, are they gonna get out it out of you because they were being sleazy? Or is it like my company who I use EMWD, are you just paying a set fee and then they help you when you need help? Well, sometimes, I mean, it depends on what you need help for. Some things obviously is not going to be under theirs, but like I need more storage space or I was having a hard time. I forget something needed to be updated with my C panel. They fixed it. No problem, no extra charge. It's just, they fixed it. So those are, yes, I, I yes. Things to be aware of. Um, but yeah, the on a budget thing, you get what you pay for when it comes to this stuff, unfortunately. I mean, I don't even say unfortunately, that's just life, but yeah. Um, Paid advertising to sell paintings. Now that is one that I wanna try. I've not tried it, I don't know. I have no idea. I will say I didn't add once to test on Facebook. Worthless. And most of the people I've talked to said the same with it. Now, to be fair, I didn't do a good job with the marketing. Like I, I made this post and I didn't like, it wasn't that attention grabbing. I didn't design it to be advertised and that's the problem. If you're gonna do an advertisement, you need to design an advertisement. I just made a post about something I had for sale and then advertised it. I don't think that, so I will, to be fair to Facebook, which mm, I, I don't like Facebook, but to be fair, I don't think I did a good job on my end of making something that was good for an advertisement. So anyway, point is I'm going to test it. I need to test that. I need to run some because I am curious to see how that goes. But when I do it this time, I want to, I, I can't bash Facebook too much saying it was useless when I didn't do a good advertisement. So you can only expect so much. So it is, but it's very expensive. I don't think it's going to be super useful. From the people I've talked to, it wasn't, but I do want to be fair in that I am aware I didn't do the best job on the post that I, I paid to advertise. So I don't expect a lot from it. So maybe I'll be surprised, but I've got to do, I've got to do that and find out. Okay, next. Um, Heather said, uh, the transfer paper leaves like a, a, when the transfer paper leaves like the resist to anything else would you what would you do to fix that so it didn't i actually didn't have a hard time with this transfer paper and this paper or this like it didn't show up um i mean the 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 for the most part the charcoal stuck to it very well um also you just see a little quick thing i'm gonna do a touch up here um but the charcoal stuck very well to the soft charcoal did i should specify that the one that didn't stick as well was when i used the hard hard lead, it, it didn't stick to the tracing paper as well, or the transfer paper, but when I switched over to the soft, it covered it completely. So that would be my my thing there. Um, Art of Raven D said, since you asked about who has cats, I have one, his name is Nugget, Oh, Monica said, when you're doing animal fur at the top, how do you draw without it looking like alfalfa? So, blend it. 
So usually, like, I'm, I'm guessing you mean at the, like, the top of the head, um, where it's supposed to look really soft, soften it with your soft blending tool. So if you can blend it out and kind of smudge the colors together, the values together, that will give you that softer look so it's not so stringy looking. Um, let's see, that's a good way to describe it. Alfalfa, you are right. D. Lynn Creative Art said, question, maybe I missed this, but is there a reason you go from the eyes to the ears and then back to the eyes? No, I go with whatever is the, the, the eyes are typically gonna have some of your darkest values. So I will often start with that. The ears are an area I hate doing. I don't like doing ears. I don't know why, I just don't like it. They, they're not something where you look at it, somebody looks at the piece and goes, wow, your ears look amazing. No one's gonna say that. So you kind of have this, oh, I don't wanna do it. So I get it done first. So the unfun part, the least fun part, I'm not rushing through. Because once I get through the other parts, you get to the point where you're like, okay, I just wanna finish this really quick. I don't want to rush, and it's like a personal psychological game I play with myself. I know I would rush through it if I saved it for the end, but I know I need to put time into it, but I really don't like doing it. So we're gonna get the, the part I don't like out of the way first. Um, I will normally start with either the ears or the eyes, but the eyes, I will, they've got some of the darkest values in there and I usually will just work my way out from that. It just makes it easier to, it also makes it easier for me to judge everything else because I can look at this and say, okay, if I go straight up from this line, straight up, that's where the whisk or the eyelash, uh, little eye whisker, eyelash, whatever starts. If I go from here out, like once I map out where the eye is, it helps me to balance out where everything else goes. I judge one location by another. So that's kind of my, I got this one locked in and I judge everything around it by that eye. So there's a few reasons. Karen said, I found an, uh, an oil of a barn owl you did from a few years ago. I find it so beautiful. I can't stop staring at it. Do you think you'd consider doing another again? Maybe pastels or pencil? Oil over acrylic barn owl. December 22nd, 2015. Would love to try it on anything except oils. I love how the purple is drawn into the owl. Yes, actually. I'll plan on getting an owl done soon. Anything except oils. Actually, do I have my paper down here still? Or did I move it? Oh, I don't think it's in here anymore. No, owl, I need to remember owl. Um, well, I guess I have the notes from Discord so I can use that. Yes, an owl. I will do one very soon. Brittany said, I'm glad that you're using affordable American charcoal pencils still made in the good old USA. I know, we don't have a lot of it. Most of the art supplies I use are not, but these, they're good too. Um, I've been a fan. Python said, hey Lisa, do you have any tips for drawing hyper-realistic eyes in colored pencil? I use Polychromos, Prismacolor, and Luminance pencils, by the way. Big. So hyperrealism, and let me separate this because a lot of people seem to mix these two up. You've got photorealism. What I did tonight, photorealism. At a glance, you're like, oh, it looks like a cat. I mean, you can tell it's a cat. I used the photo as a reference. Is it identical? No, you can tell it's artwork. No matter how realistic it is, you, you would tell it's artwork. That's photorealism. Then you get into hyperrealism. Now, hyperrealism is when it is so detailed, you can see every pore in the skin. You look at it, you can't tell the difference between that and a high resolution photograph. That is hyperrealism, and, and people mix those up all the time. So um, it always makes me laugh when I do something and list it as photorealism. They're like, that's not photorealistic. I can tell it's art. Yeah, no, you can't tell the difference between those two words is what you can't tell. So that is your difference there. So you're going hyperrealistic, and I'm not saying that was you. That was just anyone who's not understanding. But for hyperrealism, you've got to get all that tiny, tiny detail. Work big. Let's say you're doing an eye. I'm gonna do that as a 16 by 20. You have room to get every single little detail in there. So when you shrink it down and take a photo, it's like, wow, that is a photo. It looks like a photo of an eye. But the, the trick there is to be very accurate, to really watch your values and your detail. So, you know, the, like I said, the pores in the skin. So you're doing something like that. When you get into the eyelashes, look at where the eyelash, like there's a little ring where the eyelash touches the tear, the bottom of the tear line. Like you have a little loop that, there's little things like that. You're going to notice every little detail and you, here's the other thing. Photorealism, let's say I spend an hour on that. I wanna do that in hyperrealism. I'm gonna spend about 200, and no, not 200, about 120 hours. That is a bit another difference between hyperrealism and photorealism. If you are spending less than 100 hours and you think you're doing Hyperrealism, you're probably not doing hyperrealism. Like it is time consuming, that's why I don't do it. That sounds like a whole lot and not fun to me. I would be so burned out spending that much time on it. Uh, can I do it? Yes. Do I want to? Heck no. So more time, that would be my biggest tip. Work larger so you've got room for all the tiny, tiny, tiny details and spend a lot of time, a lot of time. So th those are my tips. Um, let's see what was next. Ariel said, out of curiosity, do you keep different blending stumps for graphite and charcoal? Yes, I do. 
a good question. I do. Or is it all right to share the same blending tool? I don't because the charcoal will mix in with the grass. It gets mixed up and it's different. Keep different ones. Um, good question. Barb said, could you do a chinchilla in the future? Ooh, that would be cute too. Oh, I like that. Yes. Art by Katrina Kennedy said, for realism, which do you prefer and why? Let's say for animals, colored pencil, pastel, or graphite. Well, I don't use pastels. So, well, I mean, I use, um, uh, my brain shut down. Pan pastels, God. Um, but, so it would be, in my case, let's say, between colored pencil and graphite. I don't say I have a, I can't even say I have a preference. Do I want color that day or do I want to do something with striking black and white? It just depends on what mood I'm in. I don't, like, let's say I'm going to do a painting for myself. I normally will go with acrylics or oil over acrylic. And I do oil over acrylic because the acrylic part saves time so the oil doesn't take as long. But I don't have to frame it. If I want to hang something on my wall, then I don't have to put it in a frame. So that's bonus for me. But, and I can go bigger, faster, like if I want a large piece. Like I need, I'm redoing stuff in my office. I'll do it an office to, studio, not office studio, an office tour soon. But I'm like getting, I got a new rug in there and I'm doing like changing some of the paintings and stuff. And I'll, so I will definitely, and my new buddy is in there that I will tell you about shortly. But um, I, uh, what, what my, oh, my brain shut down. I have a big painting in there right now of a deer. It doesn't fit the theme that I have going on. I need to switch out. I'm definitely going to do an acrylic painting because I can work large and I can do it quickly. I can't do something in colored pencil that fast. Now the end result, if I wasn't worried about time at all, end result, I would say acrylic and oil, I like about the same. I love working in them both. Um, but colored pencil is very slow. I'm in the same amount of time I can get this huge acrylic painting done. I'm going to get a tiny, tiny little colored pencil one done. So I, uh, it just depends on what I'm in the mood to work in. Um, I like, I know that's not the answer you're looking for, but all of the mediums can work. Um, I can get realism in, in most of them. Oil pastel is probably my, my more, I feel not as realistic at this point, but maybe eventually. Um, yeah, that is not a helpful answer to you. Answer? I don't know. I like them all. Not at all what you were asking for. Okay. Katie Stewart said, art suggestion one, fox squirrel, which has a great mix of auburn, copper, and gray fur in different lengths. Two, a raccoon done in pen pastels and colored pencil or watercolor and colored pencil. I am not opposed to either of those ideas. I'm, gonna, I'm glad these are all written here. Nick, by the way, thank you so much for doing this for me. Nick writes all of your questions down and sends them to me so I can find them all in one place. But I will definitely be going over and looking for this uh, or writing all of the, your suggestions down. Art of Raven D said, I sold artwork after three years of nothing. In 2020, I paid $8. Recently, same size of boxing I did for artwork in 2020 and slightly less weight. Oh, for packing? Yeah, $12.60 total. I paid $12.55 and inflation is yucky. Yeah, like even this thing, this um, cap that I just did, it's going to cost me probably $12 to ship. So, and I include shipping in this. So it's like, you're getting a deal if you, you bid on this guy. But it, yeah, the shipping post postcards so i think i used to pay for international for postcards or for the cards it's the same either way for international was it dollar 10 and now they're 120 130 i forget and when you add that up times 100 that's a lot i mean it is my, the price for everything is has gotten insane so it's like i have no choice i still have to be able to pay my bills and feed my animals and myself maybe I, i'm on the back burner there but it's like yeah the the cost of stuff who uh, let's see lady b miniatures and art said i hope you're well first time stream visitor i love your videos always informative thank you and welcome Lily said can someone explain how to private message on patreon i can't find it um you go, you should be able to, like, if you just go to Lawcree or patreon.com slash Lawcree, I send it through messages. You know, that is a good question. Hold on. Let me look it up. Um, oh, I'm not logged in here, so that's not going to work. And it's a pain to do that. Um, hmm. There is a way. Do you just do a Google search how to message someone, how to send a private message on, on Patreon? It'll come up. Um, it should be very easy. I just, off the top of my head, I don't know because people always message me and I just respond. So it's funny because I've not messaged someone on Patreon. So I, weird after this long. Not 
it should just be easy to click the, the name and then there should be a button just to, to message. Should be. Brittany said, would you recommend a projector to project my reference photos bigger onto canvas paper, et cetera, instead of autograph light pad I currently own? Yes. I definitely like the projectors. I feel like it gives me way more flexibility than a light pad. I mean, you can only go as big as you print it. Whereas a projector, I can go whatever size I want. So yes. Um, Baby Panda said, what do your coloring pages look like in your Patreon package? Okay, you're gonna, you guys are gonna make me sign into Patreon. Let me download one and I will put one over here. Um, let's sign in. Log in. Log in. Hopefully that password was correct. And my code is, if you can see. Okay, let me download one really quick. I've got several here. So I've been doing these so that they're really easy to color over and get something that's really realistic looking. Um, let's go with you. Whoa, where are they? Where are the links? Oh God, they're right there. You think I know how to do my own stuff. We'll just let's download the macaw. Did you download? You're thinking about it? You're not sure? Doesn't know what it wants to do? Waiting for Patreon. Why am I waiting for Patreon? Why aren't you just downloading? I don't even know why this is a thing right now. There it goes. Okay, let me pull this up. Add an image. Um, that is big. So this one's a round one, so it's a little bit different. But this was a hyacinth macaw. So this would be you can see the details and the feathers and all of that, but it gives you something to color over. You could use your colored pencils and it should cover it pretty, pretty well. But that way you're able, well, you've got a coloring page, but it's more advanced, I guess, than your just typical lines. I used to do just the line ones and it, not only did it take forever, it didn't look as good. So now I've been doing them this way and you would just print this on whatever paper you want. You could paint over it with like ink tents or watercolor if you wanted. And yeah, that is what those look like. Okay. Next. Oh, and then the messages. You should be able, like if I go, let's see, who's someone I follow? Patreon.com slash Michael Bargain. I don't know what his is. Um, let's go Jason Morgan. Oh, that's not, apparently not how to, oh, because I didn't spell it right. So yeah, you just go, so you'll go to uh, patreon.com slash lockery and there's just a message at the, the top that says message. You just click that. Okay, it's actually pretty easy. Okay. Next. Um, Sonic the Hedgehog said, I just started following one of your tutorials here and you mentioned about the importance of shadows and not pollute it by overblending. How important is it? I don't know which one you're doing. Um, it depends on what you're doing. I mean, if you overblend, you end up with one solid color. You don't, you like a one mid-range color. You don't have your light, you don't have your dark. You just keep, it's just a middle, middle muddy thing. So if you overblend, you lose the light and the dark. You, it is very important that you keep your lights in dark. So if very, we'll go with very. Starving Artist Collective said, I registered my domain name, but Weebly actually owns it. I can't get it off them now without huge money. Yeah. Funny you mention that because one of my friends, I don't know if it was Weebly or Wix, he switched to EMWD. It was over two months to get that account released or to get his um, domain name released. Two months, more than that. Because it was, we tried to do it at the end of December and it wasn't until like, was it February or March? I mean, it was ridiculous. Yeah, it was, huh. it was a nightmare. Uh, Blue said, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank, uh, thanks to you, I finally ordered my first set of Faber-Castell Polychromos and Pan Pastel. I'm so excited they'll be here any day now. Oh, you're gonna have fun. You are going to have so much fun. Should get the soft tools? You need the soft tools for the Pan Pastels. Um, Art of Raven D said, last time I attempted hyperrealism, I never finished it because it took so many hours just to get a small spot finished and I burnt out. That is me, that is 100% me. Um, there's a blue envelope message button. Yeah, okay, we found that, thank you. Okay, 
So we are 10 o'clock. Thank Wow, perfect timing. Thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, I don't know what we're going to be doing next week. I'm going to go through the list that you guys have sent or we wrote down a couple weeks ago. It will be something you requested. And the auction should be over. So somebody won the kitty. And we've got messages I've got to respond to later, late, later for sure. Um, thank you so much to our moderators, Joseph, Nick, and Clark Fine Art. Their channels are listed in the video description. They've all got art channels here, so definitely check them out. They keep all of the spam and all the stuff out of here. What domain name am, what domain am, I, am I using? I'm sorry, wait, for what? Um, Lawcree.com or, or for the server, I buy it through EMWD is where I get my domain name or I pay through that, so maybe that. Um, Sorry, my brain shut down, so I don't think I'm quite getting that. You can follow us over on our MeWe group. Link is in the description. We also have a Facebook group. I'm not as active there. I'm definitely more active on the, the MeWe one or Instagram. Links for everything are in the video description. And we already talked about Patreon, so I think we are, are we good? I think we're good. Now I get to go edit this. It takes forever. Thank you guys. I will see you next week. Hey, you. Yes, you. I see all your unused art supplies over there. Oh my god, those brushes aren't even opened yet. Tragic. You keep buying new fancy materials, but you don't use them because you don't want to waste them. Stop making your art supplies sad. Sign up for art lessons for as little as $4 a month. There are over 300 painting and drawing lessons available when you sign up, and new ones every week. Patreon.com slash Lockery. Mm -hmm.